Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome to the Leo Seal Junior Football Complex on this very special Maroon Friday as we introduce Mississippi State's 34th head football coach. Here's the format for today. We will bring up our special guests and we will take questions from the media for Coach Leach at the end of this press conference. Coach Leach and Director of Athletics John Cohen will also be available for media here to the side. Uh, we will only be taking questions for the media and we appreciate your cooperation. We will get a mic to you and please state your name and affiliation so Coach Leach can get familiar with you. It is now my pleasure to introduce the Director of Athletics at Mississippi State, John Cohen. Good afternoon, we appreciate all of you being here today. Uh, I wanna thank everybody who was involved in this shirt search and it was several people. Um, we wanted to move quickly, but more importantly, we wanted to be thoughtful and thorough in this search. As always, I appreciate Dr. Keenum's uh, guidance and wisdom. Uh, every day I'm reminded how fortunate we are to have Dr. Keenum at the helm at Mississippi State University. I wanna be brief, but I wanna be clear about a, a few things. We didn't hire Mike Leach because he's charismatic, but he is. <laughs> we didn't hire Mike Leach because he's got a great sense of humor, but he does. We didn't hire Mike Leach because he's exceptionally bright, but he is. We did not hire Mike Leach because of his dynamic personality, but he's got one. We did not solely hire Mike Leach because he's a visionary and a pioneer in the modern game of college football, but indeed, he is. We hired Mike Leach because he's a disciplinarian. We hired Mike Leach. We hired Mike Leach because he's a brilliant tactician. Most of all, we hired Mike Leach because he's a proven winner. He's won, quite frankly, at some places that are very difficult to win. So at this time, I would like to introduce uh, Coach Leach's lovely wife, Sharon. Sharon, if you would stand up. His children could, children could not be here today, but we're excited to welcome Janine, Kim, Cody, and Kirsten to the Mississippi State family. And with that, I'd like to get Dr. Mark Keenum up to make a very, very special presentation. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank all of you for being here for this great day and this great occasion and the history of Mississippi State football. I want to take this moment to say publicly how much I genuinely appreciate the leadership of our athletic director, John Cohen, and the great job he's done in managing this search. So, John, thank you and your team for this outstanding performance. Uh, Coach Leach, Sharon, welcome. Welcome to Starkville, to Mississippi State University, and to our wonderful Bulldog family. We're proud to have you as a member of our family. And Coach Leach, I know that when you want to inspire your players and your fans, uh, you use a, say, a saying of, uh, swing your sword. Well, we have a, a saying here too, when we want to motivate our players and our fans, and it's, ring your bell. <laughs> we, uh, we're proud of our cowbell. It's one of the most unique traditions in all of college athletics. In fact, we're the only Division I school where you can legally bring an artificial noisemaker and use it. But we respect that tradition. We respect what it represents. It represents our spirit, and it represents our core values of integrity, hard work, and respect for others. And we always, always ring responsibly. You'll learn more about what that means, Coach. <laughs> well, again, we respect this tradition. And with that, Coach, I wanted to present you with your very own official Mississippi State Cowbell. You know how to operate 
Danke. Ja. 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 Well, the first thing I want to say is how honored I am to have the opportunity uh, uh, to work for uh, uh, John Cohen and, and also uh, Dr. Keenum. And, uh, you know, these guys, I've, I've heard about their reputation over the years and things like that. And also Mississippi State, um, like any football coach, I've been familiar with this great state and the great players that play here and the pride that exists in this state. And although I will forever uh, be proud and, uh, if I'm not careful, get emotional about my time at Washington State and the opportunity to coach there because I'm very proud of that team and very proud of the Cougs. Um, I'm excited about this, uh, this next step, this next chapter, and to be a, Washington, or, and to be a Mississippi State Bulldog. And I think that uh, uh, I've heard for years about the family atmosphere. And I'll, I'll tell you the other thing, um, Coach Cheryl, uh, Jackie Sherrill was a guy that when I was a young coach kind of took me under his wing and, and, and told me about uh, this great place and of course I was jealous and then um, and then uh, when I when I I, um, I first started coaching baseball I started coaching baseball when I was 15 so when I got to college first year uh, uh, the textbook was baseball playbook by Ronnie Polk <laughs> 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 And it looked like a great big term paper with the, the, the you know, the, the brass things through the deal. And, and, and I still have that book, and then I made sure I got the, the updated version. And I'll tell you, and I've used what I learned out of that book in football over the years, uh, you know, how he'd organize his drills, even though his baseball had everybody going somewhere. Everybody was doing something. In our football practices, we try to have constant motion, everybody going somewhere. So don't be surprised if you come by our practice field and you see five quarterbacks uh, uh, each throwing a ball to five receivers because uh, uh, we want as much action and as much work as we can possibly get in a short period of time. I know we've got a lot of work to do here, uh, but uh, you know we've got some great players here. And uh, I'm really excited about this challenge. And uh, we've got plenty of hard work ahead of us, but it's going to be fulfilling work. We're going to have a lot of fun. And we're going to uh, uh, work harder than, uh, uh, than any team uh, in the country to be a team that uh, everyone in here can be proud of. And uh, so I really appreciate that. And then I, I, uh, my wife, Sharon, I wouldn't be here without her because there's been uh, a lot of tough times where, you know, she made more money than I did for 10 years in order to feed this football <laughs> habit. And um, so with that said, uh, I'm not a big opening statement guy. This is maybe the longest one of the year. Um, <laughs> do, uh, does anybody have any questions? All right, we'll go to questions for the media. We'll get a mic. Please raise your hand. We'll start with Dan in the front here. And uh, please state your name. <clears throat> Hey, Coach. Ben Portnoy, Commercial Dispatch. Uh, obviously, you've had opportunities to go other places from Washington State. Why was this the spot that you chose, and what went into the decision to come to Mississippi State? Uh, why I chose Mississippi State, and, 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 and you know, I, uh, the cowbell represents a lot of the pride and tradition that personifies this place, and, and I guess there's so many ways to describe that. Uh, you know, they put the symbol under the cowbell, and, and, and that means uh, more than we really have time to talk about here, but it's something that even as an outsider you feel. And then the commitment to football that the, uh, the state of Mississippi has and the entire uh, southeast region, and, and then the, the athletes that you have the opportunity to be a part of here, and they only become uh, that way through incredibly hard work and dedication, and I wanted to be a part of that, and I wanted to have the opportunity to, um, uh, you know, uh, have another chapter in my career. And we, we all, you know, why do you play sports, whether you're uh, a player or a coach, is to have the opportunity to see or do something uh, bigger than you currently are as you fight and uh, scratch uh, to achieve. And so 
um, you know, this is a place with great resources and a great opportunity, in my opinion, to do that. Hey, Mike, Tyler Horka, Jackson Clarion Ledger. Your offenses uh, at Tech and, and Washington State obviously are, you know, have, have had a lot of success and are, uh, is something built in a way that folks around here probably have never seen. How feasible is it to, you know, right away implement an offense like that here, given, you know, the players that are here and, and the culture that's already been in place? Um, I'll be able to give you a, a pretty good, uh, a better answer after about a week of spring. Uh, we've always been able to. <laughs> We've always been able to install it fast. I don't think it'll be perfect within a week, but I think it'll be uh, uh, fairly sharp within two weeks. And um, uh, but it, you know, it's not going to be perfect. I mean, that's why that's why we're in this. You're 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 always grinding away. But um, as far as seeing our offense, uh, um, and we've been doing it for a long time, but uh, you know, a lot of NFL teams have adopted it. You know, if you look at the Patriots, the uh, the Saints, the Packers. Uh, you know, and, and generally speaking, the last uh, uh, the, most of the Super Bowls for uh, the last eight, ten years have had some uh, air raid concepts in it. Um, we originally drew it from the wishbone, and you know, um, offensively, two objectives that we're trying to achieve uh, is we want to attack as much space as possible, and we want to put it in uh, all the skill positions' uh, hands, and you know, so the thought very simply uh, the more people the defense has to keep track of over a bigger area the better our chances are and uh, uh, so I don't know if you as you guys come up with a good play to do that maybe we'll cut one of the ones we got and we'll add yours because we do that we do that uh, we do that from time to time Trey Munger, WLBT in Jackson, kind of piggybacking off of that question. The SEC in the past has kind of been a conference that's relied on defense, but over like the last five or so years, it's really seen an uptick in offense. I guess, from, what have you seen from afar in that? And then coming over here, I guess, was there something that, you know, excited you about that? I think it's a little of both. You know, I think um, conferences and, and, and teams will go kind of in cycles. Um, you know, I remember when uh, I was the offensive coordinator at the University of Kentucky. Um, we led the nation in passing, you know, and then um, and uh, threw it a lot there. And I thought uh, elevated uh, things there at the University of Kentucky for the two years I had the opportunity to be there. And then, uh, you know, and then uh, there were some balls flying around then. Of course, you had Florida throwing it quite a bit then too. And, um, you know, and the biggest thing as an offensive coach, you're, we used to refer to it as uh, build a better mousetrap. You know, how do we build the mousetrap better, we used to say. You know, because, you know, building a better mousetrap. Well, if we – and, and we, we would even say stuff like, well, if we run a post on that play, that will help the mousetrap, you see. And um, the biggest thing, always trying to uh, – we spend most of our time talking about how we're going to practice and how we're going to duplicate and reinforce those skills and repetition over and over. Uh, but then, um, you know, we also talk uh, uh, quite a bit about, you know, how we're going to find ways to attack space. And, you know, sometimes you'll have a real special player, you know, like our running back this last year had an awful lot of yards. And if you, if you don't count uh, kickoff returns, um, he, led, uh, he led the Pac-12 in yards. And, um, you know, so if you've got a special player, you're trying to get the ball in his hands as many times as you can. And, devising ways to do it. And what I like about uh, what we do offensively is you got some flexibility in uh, how to do that. Joel Coleman, Starful Daily News. Uh, have you had a chance to solidify your staff yet and things? Uh, you gonna, will, will any of the current staff members possibly be retained and things? Just kind of what's your timeline on staff and stuff? Well, the timeline's as soon as possible. Uh, the timeline's as soon as possible, and, and obviously for some positions I have some people in mind, and you know, and it's, and it's always tough. And I've been on both sides uh, uh, of this coin, and I have the utmost admiration uh, for everybody that's worked here because I know what a struggle it is to be a coach, and you know, you live and die uh, on each game, and always trying to do the very best you can. So I, I, I couldn't have more respect. Uh, uh, you know, for my predecessors and what they did and, I, and, and what everybody uh, strived to achieve. 
Um, but then uh, with the course of that, I mean, I've got uh, also in, uh, there's some coaches that I know that I'm familiar with uh, that I think will best, uh, uh, you know, duplicate uh, what we're trying to achieve uh, offensively and defensively. And so um, there will definitely be uh, some that I've worked with in the past. So um, I don't have a perfect answer for that. I've, uh, I've uh, been here for, I don't know if we have 24 hours, maybe it's heading towards 24 hours. And, um, but no, that's, that's, that's the top priority is you got to get the staff uh, organized so you can duplicate your efforts and uh, take care of the team and, uh, and, and, and just uh, really start uh, uh, integrating, uh, you know, what we want to teach and accomplish. Hey, Coach, I'm Garrett Smith uh, with the student newspaper, The Reflector. Uh, I was wondering if you've thought about uh, whether or not you'll be bringing your class on insurgent warfare and uh, football <laughs> tactics to Mississippi State. I'll tell you what, that would be fun. I had a blast. So I taught a class last year, and that was a blast. Um, and uh, taught a class with uh, Senator Mike Bumgartner, for, uh, state senator there in the state of Washington, who uh, went to Harvard and... Uh, and uh, he used to work for the State Department, and he uh, taught some courses on insurgency and counterinsurgency, and you know would come around practice all the time, sit through our meetings. I knew he was dedicated when, you know, sit through those film meetings where, uh, although necessary, I myself was trying to sort of uh, sort out a way to make it go as fast as I could, and. Um, uh, so he says, you know, football and insurgency and counterinsurgency have a lot of similarities. So we, so we taught a class, and it, it, it was it was a, a, it was ridiculously uh, exciting for me because uh, what our format was was uh, Mike would talk about some of the principles of insurgency, counterinsurgency. Then uh, I'd talk about football, you know, and uh, and here'd be here you know here'd be football. All right, we're playing so and so. We got to fortify this. We got to take care of that. Can't let them attack here. We got to get them here. Once we get them moving here, we're going here. Boom, you know. And 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 and, uh, and so, uh, for my position, my part was relatively easy. Then we'd have guest speakers in there, and uh, you know, um, oh, like we we had a guy that was instrumental in busting the the uh, shoe bomber and the Boston Marathon bomber uh, from Homeland Security. We had a Air Force survival specialist people that had been in, in uh, Afghanistan. And so we really had some, you know, and what would happen, what I liked about the class, I'd learn a lot. So I'd sit there and, you know, my part, like, all right, as soon as my part's over, then I can, you know, uh, it'll get interesting because I can hear something. Well, um, you know, and they, they'd, uh, it was just captivating. And I'd leave with more questions and answers, uh, listening to the quality guys that, um, uh, came and spoke there. We had some of the past quarterbacks come and talk. Uh, Jack Thompson, who is a true hero of mine, uh, was one of them. Uh, you might remember him as the throwing Samoan. Um, and uh, Jack was one of the one of the very first island guys to ever play uh, college football. And just a, a truly outstanding uh, figure and example there at uh, Washington State. His friendship I've always valued. But he gave just a really compelling speech about uh, being a guy, uh, you know, from a different culture and a different place and how uh, he integrated himself uh, in the state of Washington with kind of the rural setting and all that stuff. And uh, just, you know, you, you meet so many great people and, you know, you can learn something from anybody. And these were people where you learn uh, what to do rather than what not to do. So I thought it was very good. Alex Scarborough with ESPN. How do you foresee building the recruiting operation here, and how important do you think it is to hire guys with SEC experience in this area? Um, well, I, I think, um, first of all, they, they've done a lot of good things recruiting here. I mean, um, you know, they've, they, they've, they've really done a fine job, I think, uh, recruiting here over the years. So there's going to be a lot of things that we need to maintain. I mean, you know, um, and maintain and continue and then uh, elevate as we see opportunities. I think that um, I think the most important element of recruiting is persistence and relationships. And I think that uh, uh, you know uh, those type of people 
uh, the, are the ones that are the best uh, recruiters. Um, and, uh, you know, and I, I think that, uh, you know, I've been all over the country and, uh, you know, a guy that really wants to recruit and it's meaningful and that uh, has a sincere message, I think they can recruit. But then also with that said, I think it's important uh, that we have some people that uh, know the ropes uh, around the, the area too. So I, I would say uh, a combination of all of it. I mean, the first and foremost, I want, uh, good quality people that are dedicated recruiters, but then, uh, and then, you know, a mixture of, uh, uh, we've got to have some really strong guys, uh, X and OYs on the field, discipline focus, you know, and, and uh, that uh, pulls a unit together. The most important thing is what you can do together. I mean, sometimes people remember a key individual here, a key individual there, but it's, uh, uh, you know, that's one thing I really felt like uh, Gardner Minshew did, uh, a uh, year before last when we won 11 games, a uh, uh, place where they, you know, they didn't think he could go to a bowl, but we won 11. And uh, and uh, he was a, a really good example of a guy uh, that could ele elevate uh, the people around him. And then, uh, and as that happens, everybody's stronger. Uh, Mike, Gary Koch, Commercial Dispatch. I'm just wondering if you've had a chance to revisit the visitors' locker room and if it's been upgraded to your expectations or not. I did experience one disappointment when I came to Mississippi State, and that would be that uh, uh, last night I wanted to go down memory lane uh, to that old visitors' locker room, uh, the artistry of which I truly admire. I mean that sincerely. Maybe my taste and view on... Uh, football and sports are a little different than others, uh, but uh, uh, the, the, the old visitors locker room at, at Mississippi State was literally a work of art, and uh, and now it's an office. So uh, um, uh, and as far as I'm concerned, that's sacred ground because you know you always go to the visitors locker room, and and obviously if you're the home team, you want to, to have the the most advantageous visitors locker room you possibly can and and, and um, you know nowadays nowadays uh, in these kinder and gentler days um, the uh, it was utterly outstanding and I mean just the thought that went into it the malicious intent uh, the, 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 the the hey it's tough to play on the road attitude um, Yep, and I counted them, and if I recall right, 37 ma nails in a concrete block, two toilets with no seats or no lids in the middle, one roll of toilet paper in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> I could not wait to go, and, and, and I, was, I, was, I was convinced that uh, here I'd have the opportunity to enjoy the fruits of a locker room uh, of, uh, of that magnitude, and I'm, I, I am disappointed that... Uh, well, because, you know, the, the thing with football, there's all these memories. There's stuff you m remember, you see, you remember all your life, you know. And, and, and that's one of them. And then, um, and then, of course, we can get into SMU's locker room, and that's an entirely other story. But, uh, and, and I'm sure we'll have time to talk about that at some point. But, no, I, 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 was, I was slightly disappointed that uh, the greatest – visitor's locker room of all time is no more. <laughs> Mike, Ben Portnoy, Commercial Dispatch again. Uh, obviously, you've been known to use the transfer portal for quarterbacks. Uh, obviously, it's early with looking at the roster, but do you anticipate looking into the transfer portal for quarterbacks this year, and have you kind of addressed that at all? Well, we'll look at the transfer portal. The transfer portal is, uh, is a new resource nowadays. You know, I mean, it's it's both positive and negative, but it, it can be a resource, and I don't think it it can be ignored really for any position. I mean, uh, football's a competitive sport, and you're always trying to upgrade. And, um, and of course, everybody, you know, uh, regardless of position, um, you know, remembers somebody that played or from uh, whenever. But, you know, if you can upgrade, I mean, that's the point of a, of a team game. And I know a lot of – guys have aspirations to play in the National Football League and stuff like that, you're in a competitive situation. And for the overall good of uh, the, entire, uh, uh, the entire Mississippi State family, anywhere we can upgrade, if we can find somebody that can do that, 
um, that that's not a resource that can be ignored so um, yeah we'll look at the portal and see what's out there in all positions and uh, from my experience a lot of times the guys uh, you know on the portal they're trying to get an opportunity to play you know maybe they're lower in the depth chart but other times uh, uh, you know sometimes it's a fit situation and so I don't think it can be ignored it's now a a factor in recruiting and kind of a reality of uh, our business. And if you can upgrade from the portal, you need to do it. Hey, Coach. Nick Suss with the Clarion Ledger. You bring up being competitive. You're coaching in a division now with guys like Nick Saban and Gus Malzahn, Jimbo Fisher, Lane Kiffin right down the road. How exciting is that for you, and how much of a factor was that in taking this job? And then how familiar are you with Lane from your days back in the Pac-12 together? I've known Lane for a long time. I've actually known Lane when he was a, a GA for Pete Carroll. Um, and, uh, and I've always liked Lane. And, uh, and, and I know that, uh, you know, you're not supposed to like anything from Ole Miss. But, you know, um, uh, I've, I've, always, I've always liked him, uh, a, a kind of an entertaining guy. And then, um, uh, and then, you know, all those guys I know, you know, uh, Nick and Jimbo. And this. This conference is loaded with quality coaches. That's what makes it exciting. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, is I came from a conference loaded with quality coaches too, not to diminish uh, uh, either conference. You know, I mean, the, the, the resources vary, the opportunities vary, but uh, um, you know, I, I, like, I, I like playing against crummy coaches better than really good <laughs> ones. But, um, and, uh, but you know, as I look around uh, these conferences, uh, as I look around these conferences, uh, there's no hiding from good coaches. You're going to run into a good coach, and you're going to have to fight like crazy uh, at every conference you're in with regard to the quality of some of these coaches. Yeah, you don't want to get bit by him, I'll tell you that. You see that? <laughs> he, that's, the, that's the dog version of, like, a leather jacket. He'd be like uh, the Fonzie of uh, Bulldogs, so you don't mess <laughs> with him. Hey, Mike, Matt St. Jean, WTVA. So in the past, you've done a ranking of different mascots. Where do the Bulldogs fall in terms of the Mike Leakes rankings of mascots? Oh, geez, I got a really good joke that I'm not going to tell here. But I'm trying to think, uh, well, first of all, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, I'll, I'll, I, I will. I will. I will tell you the punchline of the joke. The punchline of the joke was that dog will bite you. <laughs> um, but but the the uh, uh, I'll tell you this. I mean, you know, they call them bulldogs for a reason, and uh, and um, you know, and they're built for combat, and uh, and you know, and I know a lot of. Uh, uh, I, I, you know, young kids a lot of times start out afraid of them, maybe, maybe for good reason. And so, uh, uh, and, and I know I'm scared of this one, so I'm glad I represent him. Hey, Mike, Tyler Horka, Clarion Ledger again. Going back to Lane Kiffin, what was your perception of the Egg Bowl coming into this? Obviously, you've coached at places with big rivalries, Apple Cup, you just came from, but... Uh, here, Mississippi State, Ole Miss is a pretty big rivalry. A lot of people care about it. What's your perception of it? Well, I think it's huge. I think it's huge, and I think there's, you know, everywhere you you kind of have your rivalries, uh, uh, and you know, it's it's, uh, and then you know, the better you get, the more rivalries you have, because everybody wants to uh, get a piece of you, and uh, so we want to, you know, we want to put out a quality enough product that. Uh, uh, and it'll take it'll it'll take a couple of years, but where you consistently uh, beat some teams to where uh, everybody feels like uh, they're your rival. But I think you know, o Ole Miss is right down the road. Ole Miss is a a, a place that uh, that uh, 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 Mississippi State's always taken a lot of a great deal of pride in beating, and uh, you know. We want to elevate that. We want, you know, it's it's very important to all of us to to win the egg bowl. But the the, the best way to play in that egg bowl is uh, is get better every day. Hey, 
Logan Lowry, Daily Journal on Tupelo. Just what are your initial impressions of the roster that you're inheriting? Uh, my initial impressions, and they are initial, is that they're, it's, is that they're good. I mean, the thing, you know, I mean, uh, good, solid football players. Uh, I knew a good uh, uh, a coach, uh, old school coach from Florida State. He used to say, we're looking for runners and hitters. And, uh, and, and just looking at I, there, there, I, there's definitely some runners and hitters on this team. And I'll tell you, some of these guys, like, and, and, you know, uh, I've always been told I had reasonably big hands, but I shake hands with some of these guys, you know, and, 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 and you know, and I feel like I'm 10. And so, uh, uh, and, and we, we got some, we, we got some, some big hands and long levers and, uh, which is arms. That's football for arms. And then, uh, um, uh, I mean, I'm excited about the chance to coach him, and I think a lot of the things that are exciting about coaching is discovery. One, discovery of what somebody's capable of, because uh, a lot of times they're discovering that the same time you are, because everybody can work harder than they think they can. Everybody's a little better than they think they are. Um, and then, um, and then the other thing is, is as you, as players grow and develop and things from one day to the the next, uh, pretty soon. You know they can do something they couldn't do before, and they didn't think they'd be able to. And so, I mean, that's exciting. I mean, there's a uh, there's a, there's a lot of discovery in this business, and I think that's what uh, uh, keeps you interested. I think addiction would be a better word, but um, um, you know, because you know, coaches get addicted. You know, I mean, all the time you see people uh, uh, retire, and it's 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 tough on them, and. Uh, and, and, and some of these guys get reeled back in all the time. Coach, <clears throat> Danny Smith, Starville Daily News. Welcome to Starville, Mississippi State. Thank just, you. Just talk about, John said about discipline was one of the things that, that attracted to you. Just talk about your philosophy on that piece and what it means to you. You know, that, that's, uh, I mean, it kind of, it kind of depends, the, you know, specifically what happens. The quick answer is accountability. I mean, Everybody's got to be accountable, and it's got to be an, an, an equal level of accountability. And um, you know, I've always thought that uh, um, you know, it, 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 whatever is the undesired behavior, you got to make make sure the desired behavior is easier. You know, if you it, you know, if you want guys to go to class, you got to make sure that uh, not going to class becomes really inconvenient. And um, uh, <laughs> Uh, whether it's uh, uh, having somebody do more or, 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 or taking something away that they want, you know, and um, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, uh, you just got you just got to make it more convenient to do uh, the thing that's right because in the long run, everybody wants the same thing, and I think sometimes that needs to be illustrated to them. Everybody wants the same thing as far as being the best that they can possibly be, and. And uh, down deep, they want it. It's it's like uh, following that path can get hard, but you got to make it inconvenient to stray from the path, you know. Coach has time for a couple more. We'll go to the right. Okay. Ryan Phillips, Starkville Daily News. Uh, hey, Coach, welcome to Starkville. Uh, how, you've already been making your rounds. I know you went to George Sherman today uh, or yesterday. Um, so, what, what would how would you rate your? Uh, yeah, what do you think of this suit? <laughs> <laughs> Very sharp. Don't get real used to that part of it, okay? But how would you rate your first 24 hours here kind of making the rounds in the community? I think it's outstanding. I mean, uh, you know, it's, it's what a great college town is. I mean, it's, uh, it's all Bulldogs uh, 24 hours a day, you know, and, and, and whether it's football or whether it's academics or whether it's, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, other, other sports or, the other thing, you know, universities always have a dimension where, um, you know, there's a lot of things. You know, you've got the Grant Library here. You've got, uh, you know, uh, museums, exhibits that come through here, great lecturers, people that know something. Uh, you know, uh, I'm sure, uh, obviously, a bunch of people have written some great books around here. Um, you know, uh, professors and things and some of their... Research. I can tell you right now, uh, 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 Coach Polk 
wrote a great book, okay? And so there, there's, some, there's some minds in whatever industry they're in, uh, uh, or interest, no, industry's wrong, but interest, uh, that are just outstanding. And, and, and anytime people are pursuing uh, uh, knowledge and thought, uh, a lot of good things come out of it generally. Coach Brian Haydad, Super Talk Mississippi. What's the most important factor for a coach when he's deciding to take a new job? What was something that was, would have been a deal breaker if it wasn't here or something that they have this, so I'm going to take this job? You know, you're always really conflicted because, you know, um, you, you create great relationships with, you know, your, your previous team and, and uh, you know, coaches, fans, and some things like that. Um, you know, but then the other side of it is, is uh, you're going to be dead in 100 years anyway. And um, so, you know, you want to uh, try to have a, as many experiences as you can. And, and uh, you know, everybody's got goals and things that they want to accomplish. And so, you know, it is kind of a path. And then, um, and uh, you know, and, and really, I guess in my case, uh, I just wanted different experiences, although I, I'll always cherish uh, the experiences I had previously. And uh, I think the, the departure is the hardest, the, you know, because uh, even though you see, uh, see it as captivating and life lessons to have a different experience, go to a different place, you know, different set of problems, do different things, opportunity to work with different people, different part of the country, but part of the country I've always Loved having gotten my master's in, uh, uh, in Daphne, Alabama, at the United States Sports Academy, and coached at Valdosta, uh, and then coached at Kentucky. Um, yeah, I just uh, I, I just wanted uh, a part of that, and I didn't want to get uh, uh, to miss that. Okay, and then um, I can't think of any really uh, you know uh, huge uh, deal breakers. I mean. Uh, you want to have the ability to develop, uh, uh, you know, your staff and your players without a lot of distractions. And, of course, that uh, requires uh, um, incredible support from uh, the university and the administration. And, uh, you know, and uh, uh, I've worked for some great presidents and great ADs, and, and uh, I, re I truly believe that exists here. And you can look around this campus at the facility and how spotless everything. I mean, this place is, I don't know how, some of you guys may need to get out more. If you, if you think this, uh, uh, this is one of the cleanest campuses I've ever seen in my life. Uh, um, um, and, and I think that exhibits kind of the, 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 the pride and the, and the focus of uh, the administration. Uh, um, you know, to achieve uh, big things, and uh, uh, in in uh, working with them, I want to be a part of uh, achieving some uh, big things too. And like I say, that uh, together with our players, because players and coaches are the same. I mean, you're partners, and uh, you know, we want to put together uh, the very best team that we can, and so that we can all be proud of and continue to build on it. Monger, WLBT coach. It seems like in the past uh, your name has come up when SEC jobs have opened. I guess has you know being a head coach in the SEC something you've always thought about, or if maybe those rumors weren't true, I don't know. Um, I've always wanted. Um, I've always wanted. Uh, you know, a, a, a quality place where people are committed to winning, and then, um, and then I, you know, this. Uh, and I, just to be perfectly honest, the recruiting base here is uh, hard to resist. I mean, because a 300-mile uh, radius of here just has outstanding uh, recruits. I mean, uh, and, and, and it all starts with kind of the commitment on the high school level and the great job uh, the high school coaches do here. And um, to have the opportunity to put that uh, – together in a college town where there's a lot of energy and it's meaningful to people every day. And then also, um, uh, you know, where, where uh, you know, you continue to strive and do it together. I mean, 
you know, that's exciting. And then the other thing is, is just uh, like I mentioned, I've always admired Mississippi State and their tradition because I don't know how to describe it. Uh, and I, I've been kind of searching for this uh, uh, before and since I've got here, but there's, you know, there's a, there's a unique independence that exists with uh, uh, Mississippi State uh, that, uh, uh, that doesn't exist other places, you know. There's, uh, you know, they're they're very direct, very down to earth, and um, and uh, independent in uh, the way they do. You know, there's not, um, you, you know, everybody's not uh, running around in linen suits even when they're it's their casual time. You know what I mean? Uh, and uh, so you can. Uh, uh, and, yeah, and there's a gritty toughness here too that I think is uh, uh, that exists and allows uh, achievement and people to get things done. Thank you very much for coming.